Welcome back, I'm Dr. Dai, and this time we're gonna take a look at connections to some of the other metabolic pathways. So more than just breaking down glucose because it's not the only thing we consume, right? So we learned how glucose catabolism provides energy to cells. Uh, but living organisms consume lots of different nutrients like proteins from, like I say, a turkey sandwich. Um, so how does a turkey sandwich with its protein content, and maybe you have a piece of cheese on there, so that's also protein and fat, um, how does it contribute to cellular energy? So the answer lies in the interconnected nature of these metabolic pathways. Um, they're like really intricate networks where substances flow back and forth wherever they're needed. Um, None of them are isolated from each other. Instead, the products of one pathway may serve as inputs for another, uh, creating another connection. So glycogen, uh, which is composed of glucose units, serves as a short-term energy storage molecule in animals. So excess glucose gets converted to glycogen, and then it's stored mainly in the liver and around the muscles. Uh, makes sense, right? You want you want glucose readily to be available to your muscles, so if you need to be feeding them a quick source of ATP production, you can. Um, glycogen is used whenever blood sugar levels decrease. So this provides a sustained source of glucose for ATP production during prolonged exercise, for example. Um, sucrose is a disaccharide formed from glucose and fructose, and it undergoes digestion in the small intestine. So glucose and fructose are absorbed separately into the bloodstream. Fructose is one of the three dietary monosaccharides, along with glucose and galactose, um, that's absorbed directly during digestion. Both fructose and galactose um, catabolize, or catabolism, excuse me, yields the same ATP production as glucose. It just undergoes some minor modifications to go through the process. When it comes to proteins, our cells can utilize a variety of different enzymes to break them down. Um, typically, amino acids are recycled for protein synthesis, right? We've got to build the proteins that we need in our cells, um, not just the ones we've eaten. Um, however, when there's an excess of amino acids or during periods of food scarcity, some amino acids enter the glucose catabolic pathway. Before entering these pathways, each amino acid undergoes a removal of its amino group, uh, which is then converted into ammonia. Uh, in mammals, the liver combines two ammonia molecules with one carbon dioxide molecule to produce urea. Uh, consequently, uh, urea is the primary waste product in mammals derived from the nitrogen present in amino acids, um, and it gets excreted in, um, in your urine. And then finally, lipids um, are connected to the glucose pathway, um, lipids that are connected to the pathway rather, uh, include cholesterol and triglycerides. Um, cholesterol is crucial for cell membrane flexibility, very, very important, and it serves as precursor to steroid-based hormones, not the scary, you know, anabolic, or, um, anabolic hormones. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the natural steroid hormones that are produced by your body. Um, cholesterol synthesis begins with acetyl-CoA and proceeds unidirectionally. It does not produce any ATP. Um, triglycerides, on the other hand, <clears throat> they function as long-term storage, energy storage, um, in animals. So they contain roughly twice the energy of a carbohydrate. Um, they comprise a glycerol and three fatty acids. Um, animals can synthesize most required fatty acids. Uh, triglycerides can be both synthesized and broken down within the glucose catabolic pathway. Um, glycerol enters glycolysis after phosphorylation while fatty acids are broken into two carbon units that uh, join into the citric acid cycle. So, you know, depending on how it's broken down, it can enter these different parts of the cycle because it's the same, same size. It fits with all the different enzymes. All right, thank you for joining me for chapter four, we finished. Uh, I recommend using the figures from the textbook to help you review each of these different metabolic pathways. Practice drawing it out yourself and note where you have you know, reactants coming in, what the products are produced, how much energy was used, how much energy it produced. Um, kind of think of it as making little equations for yourself so you can keep it all straight. And I will see you when we start chapter five. Thanks.